In a time I knew nothing about leadership, and I held on to beliefs such as a leader is born, not made, I learned five lessons about leadership from my five-year-old course. And these five lessons are, have a clear vision, see opportunity and conflict, have empathy, lead by example, and fifth, come into it with questions and stay with the questions. Here's my story. In 1998, there was an ice storm that covered all of Ontario and Quebec and several northeastern states. Freezing rain ruled with crushing force, collapsing hydro towers, snapping power lines and trees like twigs, killing people. It was a disaster. But on the fourth day, when the sun came out, the nightmare was replaced with scenes of incredible beauty. The ice reflecting the sun's rays in millions of diamonds. I decided to go to the barn, knowing that my five-year-old horse, who'd been confined to his 10 by 10 stall for three days, would be in desperate need of exercise and fresh air. But when I got there, I discovered that the paddocks were still far too treacherous for safe turnout. And there was no electricity, making it impossible to ride in the arena. So I decided that I was going to ride my horse outdoors on the roads that crisscross the Freshman Park. I see Mark shaking his head. <laughs> <laughs> so I took my horse out of his stall, I groomed him, I tacked him up, I put corks on his shoes for good traction, and off we went to what would become the most memorable ride of my life. We headed west towards the campground. On the way back, I chose to go through the woods. What happened next, I could not have predicted. I heard the sound of breaking dishes to the right, and then again, closer behind us. The sun, much higher up, was coaxing icicles and ice leaves off the branches. And before we knew it, we were surrounded by the sound of breaking dishes. My horse freaked out. He bolted, I barely managed to hang on to him and to stop him. And I was so scared. And in my head, there was this voice going like, What were you thinking, you idiot? <laughs> going for a hack in conditions like this? <coughs> you can't dismount, you have zero traction in these riding boots. You won't be able to control your horse on the ground. And yet in the saddle, I didn't feel safe at all because the horse underneath me had turned into a bomb ready to explode. His fear creating such exquisite engagement that his hind feet were literally touching the heels of his front feet. He was ready to rear and if I held on too tight, he would fall over backwards over me. In my panic, I also heard the voice of my first riding coach. She was a big woman always calm, and even in the most dire situation, I'd be hanging to my horse's neck about to fall to the ground, I would hear her say, sit up, look up. <laughs> so I, I took a deep breath, and I did just that. I sat up, I sat deep in the saddle, and I looked up towards the barn, and I decided right then and there that I was going to get us, Theo and I, together, safely, back to the barn. Now, this is what he wanted to do, too. We had a conflict in the means of achieving this. He wanted to run there, belly to the ground, and I just didn't think it was a very good idea to do that, <laughs> given the road conditions. So I took another deep breath. And I knew that this conflict could turn into a catastrophe. If I didn't understand that he was incapable of walking calmly as I wanted to, but I also knew something else. I knew that this exquisite engagement he had underneath was also the key ingredient in producing those beautiful movements called pia and passage, <laughs> where the horses, the Grand Prix horses, are very elevated. I'd also seen an interview of Kira Kirkland, one of the top dressage riders and trainers in the world, where she'd been asked, what is your secret, Kira, in producing consistently horses that piaf and massage so beautifully? She laughed. It's really simple. You take 10 horses and riders on a long path, and 
when you're the farthest away from the barn, you send nine horses and riders back to the barn, and the tenth horse learns to pee off. <laughs> so I took another deep breath. I sat deep in the saddle, looked up, I put my legs on and released the tension on the reins, and he pulled it again. And I continued with the cycle of AIDS. Legs on, release, squeeze, legs on. In human language, the cycle of AIDS would have sounded something like this. Yes, I agree with you. We must get back to the bar as soon as we can. But no, can you think of a different way of doing this? Yes, forward is the answer. What can you do differently to go forward to the bar? Yes, forward is the answer, but how can you do it in a different way? And sure enough, as I repeated my cycle of AIDS, the first hint of a step of Piaf came. And I patted my horse. He received the praise well. I continued with my cycle of AIDS. And sure enough, more and more steps of Piaf and Passage appeared. The next one, always a little more expressive, a little more elevated than the first, the previous one. And with each step, some praise, eventually with voice. Yes, feel. That's right. Awesome. Can you give me another one? And sure enough, that day, my five-year-old horse, Piaf and Passage, all the way back to the barn with me in the saddle. What I learned from that ride were powerful principles of leadership. First, have a clear vision. And sometimes you don't have days to develop a clear vision. You must develop a clear vision. <coughs> Stop a moment and hold on to it for dear life. Second, see opportunity in conflict. Because in conflict there is engagement. Something to work with. Third, have empathy. Put yourself in the other person's shoes. Fourth, lead by example. I had to calm myself first before I could expect him to calm down. I had to focus away from my fear into possibility before I could expect him to listen to me. And fifth, get into it with questions, because it is with questions that you empower the leader that lives in each and every one. Thank you.